successful grant writing, and then other uh, donors that are all displayed over here uh, on our plaque. Uh, with between all of those funds, we raised about $5.4 million, uh, all of uh, which went into this building or will be soon. Uh, we're not quite done with it yet. Uh, it's kind of like building an airplane while it's in the air, uh, but we're going to be uh, doing some work, another $1.5 million uh, going into the facility over the next 12 months. And so we started out with, here in this building, with uh, industrial maintenance technology and aerostructures, uh, but have since added welding and construction. And in the fall, we'll be adding uh, plumbing and electrical and HVAC uh, to this building. And uh, in, in the fall of 24, uh, we're not quite all the way through the process, but we've passed the hardest of the three steps and we'll be adding automotive uh, to this building as well. Pretty exciting. And the other part of it, as president, I always have to think about the future. On the other side of that big wall at the end of this hallway is nothing but a large storage facility. So if we ever need more programming, we just knock the wall down and keep moving forward. We've only used about half uh, of, the, of the size of this building. So uh, pretty amazing. Huh? And so that's going to hopefully be a, a hub for not only Neosho County, but all of the counties connected that, that you know, for instance, the school district can send one bus but hit eight programs, right, or more uh, at yeah, this facility. Nice. So really excited about what this um, uh, this facility has brought to the area. Neosha County has always been interested in career and technical education. We've had a nursing program, uh, you know, since the 60s, um, and so uh, in all kinds of different healthcare programs that are not in this building that we offer as well, uh, as well as criminal justice programs. Uh, we have uh, paralegal, and, and court reporter, we're the only court reporter program uh, in the state of Kansas of public education. So we're uh, excited about those programs as well. Uh, but these career tech ed programs uh, have been a real uh, shot in the arm to the institution, but also to the area uh, because it provides skills and workforce needed uh, to move our economy forward and provide opportunity to our students, uh, some of which may be interested in bachelor's degrees, others are interested in getting uh, national certifications and moving out into the industry right out of high school. And in this facility uh, and these instructors uh, make that possible. And thanks to our, our good friends, the state of Kansas, through something called Excel and CTE, and the Technical Education Authority. Uh, they're all partners in making sure all of this happens for you. And a new uh, program offered in Kansas called uh, the Kansas Promise Act. Uh, that just started uh, two years ago. And that one, the, the Excel and CTE, allows for high school students to take career and technical education um, uh, classes without cost, for, uh, except for a few fees here and there. And Neosho has cut those fees down as, as low as possible. Uh, well, what about adults? What if adults want to come back and pick up uh, a, a construction certificate or a welding certificate? Well, thanks to the Kansas Promise Act, they can do that too, and the state will pay for that uh, in career and tech ed. So the way is clear for anyone who wants to get a degree or certificate in career and tech ed uh, in the state, which is wonderful leadership uh, by our state, and we're very happy to help make it happen here uh, at Neosho County Community College. National Career and Signing Day had start nine years ago, uh, right here in the state of Kansas, Washburn Tech was the first uh, college in the country uh, to offer National Career, uh, National Signing Day uh, for Career and Tech Ed, uh, and it's been spreading across the country ever since. It gives some uh, recognition, uh, just like you know when we do National Signing Day for the NJCAA, uh, and they you know sign LOIs and they put on the hat uh, of the college that you're transferring to. That's really important because they've worked very hard uh, to get that scholarship to move on to a college level. Well, guess what? Our students have worked really hard as well and are moving into career and tech ed. We want to give them the same kind of recognition, the same kind of importance that that has for what they're doing, because what they're doing is helping the economy move forward. They're helping a business move forward, and they're helping themselves at the same time. Wonderful for, for everyone. It's a win-win-win type situation, and we wanted to give them the recognition. Thanks to Washburn Tech for creating it, uh, and 
thanks for all my staff, and thanks for everyone, all of our vendors, uh, to make it possible here today. So uh, thank you very much. I'm going to uh, 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 get out of your way, but first, I'm going to introduce uh, our uh, guest speaker. I'm going to be reading uh, his bio, So I, and I, I read it a couple of times before. And my degrees are in broadcasting, so I used to read speeches for a living over the air, live on uh, the radio or whatever, uh, and uh, I was uh, no better at it now than I was then. So that, why did I get into education? Because uh, I wasn't really good. So here we go uh, uh, with uh, uh, the, the bio. Today you're going to meet Mike Gibson. Mike is the Executive Vice President of the Associated General Contractors of Kansas, AGC. AGC of Kansas is recognized as the Chamber of Commerce for the construction industry in Kansas. AGC of Kansas represents over 300 Kansas construction general contractors, subcontractors, and professional uh, service firms and their 20,000 employees and is headquartered in Wichita, which is its le and its legislative affairs office in Topeka. Prior to leading AGC of Kansas, Mike Gibson represented AGC of, in New Mexico, Louisiana, and in Houston, Texas. In addition, Mike has served on the board of direction, directors of the National Center for Construction Education and Research, that's NCCER, which provides national uh, standardized construction craft training certification for both the younger generation and the existing workforce. Mike is a graduate of Texas Tech University, where he received a BS in business management and serves on a wide range of economic development, workforce development, and chamber groups. Mike is a resident of Andover, Kansas, and is married to his wife, Rachel, and has two kids, Nicole, who is a 2016 graduate of K-State, and Zach, who recently graduated on a golf scholarship at Tabor College. Please welcome to the podium, Mike Gibson. Here. Uh, it's great to be here uh, with you. Uh, I, I, this is about the students today, but I want to really focus in on the parents. Uh, and the reason why is what you're doing out here, and I, I tell these instructors and the faculty, you, you are economic developers. And I get this funny look like, no, we're, we're educators. And, and I said, no, you're economic developers. And the reason why I say that is uh, without vocational CTE programming, there's not economic development. And I think, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that here, here in a minute uh, in, in Topeka, where our legislature finally has, a light bulb has gone on to, to make them realize the value of CTE vocational programming. Over 40 years ago, uh, Washington D.C. in their infinite wisdom, and anytime Washington D.C. says they're going to they're going to come help you, that's when you start to worry. But for over 40 years ago, they directed education to send everybody to college. Okay, now college is not meant for everybody, and especially the high cost of college today, it's becoming even more difficult uh, to the point that now Fortune 500 companies over the last year have started to change their requirements for employment to not require a college degree because of the labor market being the way it is. But over that last 40 or 45 years, in the infinite wisdom of our Washington DC leaders, uh, trying to send everybody to college, CTE vocational programming got dismantled and became de-emphasized, which was a major, major mistake for this country. Uh, I think now Congress is starting to understand we outsourced all of our manufacturing for the most part overseas, which was a huge mistake, and now it's starting to come back. On top of that, the baby boom generation, the younger generation sitting in this audience today, mm -hmm. all pr should know who the baby boom generation is, but that it, they are starting their retirement process, and there's a huge vacuum there. But one of the things that Associated General Contractors started a journey about 20 some odd years ago adopting NCCR, the National Center for Construction Education Research uh, Materials, into the high schools 
to help bring back vocational CTE programming across the state. And I've been a champion of this since coming to, to Kansas 11 years ago because in my former life, I did the same thing in three previous states. In fact, uh, in Houston, Texas, back in the, the late 90s, the, the petrochemical companies like Shell, Exxon, Roman Haas, told the construction industry, get your act together. We need more efficiency, more productivity out of the construction industry. If you don't come together and solve that, we're moving our plants to China or India. You could have heard a pin drop with the executives of Brown and Root, Fleur Daniels, H.P. Zachary, all coming together for, for, the, for the betterment of the industry to share their resources. And they came up with a super curriculum called the National Center for Construction Education Research. In fact, I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. Uh, but we, we finally realized as a country that uh, that vocational programming is critical to economic development. And one of the things that really brought this home last year, I have up on the screen three projects. One, a project in, in Ohio, the Intel microprocessing plant, which, which was announced last year, a $14 billion uh, microprocessing plant. Also, a battery plant in the Carolinas was announced last year. And everybody's aware of the project, the Panasonic project that was announced last year here, here in DeSoto, Kansas. Now, what, what do those three projects have in common? Anybody got a, an idea? Anybody want to answer that question? The question that all three companies ask, can you build and maintain our facility? All 50 states are giving tax credits, land, and cash to try to attract these companies into their respective states. So basically that's a level playing field. But now the question Fortune 500 companies are asking, can you build and maintain your facility? That's where AGC came into play. Lieutenant Governor David Tolan called me about a year and a half ago and said, Mike, I need your help. Uh, you have access to a lot of data out of Washington, D.C. with your national organization, which, oh, by the way, Associated General Contractors is the largest construction trade association in the country. We represent over 35,000 construction firms and about 12 million construction workers across the country, both union and open shop. Uh, your president said, I, I represent 300 construction firms and 20,000 employees here in the state of Kansas. But several years ago, my mom was at a, a, a get together with her friends and one of her friends said, what's your son do for a living? He says, well, he runs a trade association. And she said, well, is that like a union? And she said, well, I really don't know. And when she called me, I said, it's like a chamber of commerce. She said, oh, I know what a chamber of commerce is. In fact, we are more than a chamber of commerce. The Kansas Chamber and all these local chambers, they don't have a national training curriculum. They don't have a statewide relationship with high schools, community colleges, and Votech centers the way AGC does. But the Panasonic project really brought into perspective to the legislators that we needed to do more in terms of CTE vocational programming. We needed to have a pipeline and this is, I'm directing this to, to the parents now. Your son or daughter is over here in this program and in the high school program to take advantage of one, the baby boom generation who's retiring. We, I will tell every young person in this room today, you are a better position now than any generation in probably 75 years. Why? To take the jobs that are gonna be continue to be open because of the retirement of the baby boom generation. And that's gonna provide you with not only a good paying professional career, but upward mobility to move up through the rank and file, probably faster than any generation in 70, 80 years. And for that, I'm excited for you. I'm really excited for you. But for the parents, over the last 40, 45 years that Congress was telling educators to send everybody to college, 
the image of CTE vocational programming got tarnished. And a lot of parents feel like if my son or daughter doesn't go to college to become a doctor or lawyer, they're not going to be successful. Let me give you one example. The, the governing body for community colleges and four-year universities, you know him, Blake Flanders, the CEO of the Kansas Board of Regents. Blake Flanders is a good friend of mine. Blake Flanders' son chose not to go to college back in the day and decided to get into a, plum, a plumbing apprenticeship program. Worked his way up and a few years later decided to start his own plumbing subcontracting firm. Blake Flanders told me when I first met him, he said, Mike, I've heard a lot about you, your workforce background, but let me tell you a story about my son. The way he was telling me about it, he says, do you realize my son makes more money than me and my wife combined? Now, I don't know what they pay the CEO of the Kansas Board of Regents, but I would suggest to you it's not $20,000 a year, okay? But that's an example of where the trades, and it doesn't make any difference whether it be construction, whether it be manufacturing, whether it be agriculture, whether it be aviation, whatever it is, has been given a, a bad rap because of what Congress did 40 or 45 years ago. We're not gonna reverse that perception, and we all know perception is reality, but the fact is, it is a noble profession to, to pursue not just noble, but it pays big time in terms of a professional career. My work with the Lieutenant Governor in the Department of Commerce over the last year and a half produced not only a light bulb in terms of understanding we have to have a pipeline of skilled workers to attract the next Panasonic into Kansas. In fact, there's two uh, microprocessing chips manufacturers, one in Wichita and one in Burlington, that's working right now to secure Chip Act money that's gonna build multi-million dollar manufacturing facilities here in Kansas. Who would ever thought that Kansas would become a chip manufacturer? But the reason for that is states that have been housing those, those facilities have been shut down five or six times over the last uh, couple, three years because of COVID. In fact, my conversation with Panasonic, IS executives, Tell me why, What's the, what was the driver to get your attention to move out of California? They said, we were shut down five times over a two year period of time with COVID by one person, the governor. And he said, how in the heck can we manage our facility when at any moment's notice we're subject to be shutting down? And we started looking over the fence and seeing, are there other states that are more user friendly, business friendly? and also are, are very consistent in how they make things available. And our employees were looking for quality of life. I will share with you, I've lived in my home state of Louisiana, in Houston, Texas, where I commuted an hour and a half one way to go 20 miles. I look back on that, I still don't know how I did that. And in, in New Mexico. The only reason why I'm here is New Mexico has a major problem with heroin in the high school. And I didn't realize how bad it was until I went to a parent uh, event, my daughter played on a golf team, and afterwards a parent came who had just lost her son to a drug overdose with heroin. I went home that night and I told my wife, I said, we're moving. We have 100 offices around the country, ABC does, ABC of America. And I just happened to be good friends with the executive director here in Kansas who was gonna buy a business back in Lindsborg. That sweetest olive horse, Hemploy, mm -hmm. he bought that company. He and his wife were from, from uh, Lindsborg. He said, Mike, you ought to look at Kansas. I will tell everybody here, and I know I'm probably preaching the choir, but I, I find people who are born and raised here are the toughest critics on Kansas in terms of quality of life you do not realize the kind of quality of life that you have in this state compared to other states. I will tell you, an hour and a half commute going 20 miles, doing it every day, both, that's one way, is not what I consider good quality of life. But Panasonic executives said, our employees are looking for quality of life. 
How many times you heard that Kansas is a flyover state? Ladies and gentlemen, I will tell you, those days are over with, that there's a lot of companies, a lot of employees who are looking for better quality of life. And I will suggest to you, in the 11 years I've been in this state, I will stack up Kansas to any state in the country in terms of that, that particular item. Uh, so Panasonic was, was the catalyst to get our legislators attention. A funny thing happened along the way. Last year, we host an annual legislative day in Topeka. And last February, uh, we hosted a legislative day. You'd be happy to know that uh, for the first time, I said to my lobbyist, we, we would have visit with key legislators every, you know, during the day, and then we wrap up having a, a reception at Topeka Country Club. I said, this year, I don't want to do something a little different. Our longest partnership with NCCR and, and the CTE Vocational Programming is Washburn Technology. In fact, I have, and I will make this offer to you over the next couple of years, I'd like to have one of your faculty attend our strategic planning workforce meeting with our board of directors. This year it's in Nashville. Last year it was in Sandestin, and the head director at Washburn Tech got to bring he and his wife down, and they, they enjoyed playing in the sand. But uh, the fact is, uh, we, we had our reception at Washburn Technology. So the legislators could see what, we, what I've been telling them in committee. You're talking to somebody or listening to somebody. Normally you're given three to five minutes to do a presentation for a legislative committee. I average 45 to 50 minutes. Now my board of directors say I talk too much. Okay. Now afterwards I'm gonna do a poll and you're probably gonna tell me I talk too much. Okay. But that's okay, I consider that a badge of honor. That, we finished up that reception at Washburn Technology. I'm heading back to Wichita about 9.30, 10 o'clock. I'm on the other side of Emporia. And I, I remember it like it was yesterday. House Committee Chair Sean Tarwater out of Stillwell calls me and he says, Mike, I just got off the phone with Lieutenant Governor David Toller. He says, you guys have been doing a lot of great things in helping bring back CTE vocational programming because you've got a nationally certified curriculum. Oh, by the way, the NCCR curriculum is recognized and certified by the uh, U.S. Department of Education, U.S. Department of Labor, and U.S. Department of uh, Corrections. In fact, we have it in four correction facilities. We have a large masonry program for lawyers and inmates at El Rayo Correction Facility, about 150 instructors or 150 uh, uh, low risk inmates. About half of them have been hired over the last couple of years. They tell me they're better employees than, than the ones they got with my masonry set. But they were short some money. And I'm gonna digress here. They were short money. They got their instructors in our trainer trainer. They had the space, but they didn't have the state money to pay for block and cement. So being the chamber for the construction industry, I reached out to Monarch Cement. I said, could you donate the block and cement for that program over there? Absolutely. How, how soon do you need it? I mean, they almost knocked my doors down. Now, why did Monarch Cement do that? Why did they, for the last eight years, donate block and cement to El Rayo Correction Facility? Well, I happened to be on a plane a couple of years ago going out to the West Coast and the president of Monarch Cement was going to Denver. I didn't know he was on the plane and we did the plane, he touched me on the shoulder and said, Mike, I got to tell you something. Our company is so excited that you gave us the opportunity to do that because we pride ourselves on helping CTE vocational programming because if we don't have masons out there laying block and cement, we don't sell product. If we don't sell product, we're out of business. So I go back to our instructors you are economic developers. Whether you know it or not, you are economic developers. But I'll go back to my story. I'm on the other side of Emporia. And Chairman Tarwater says, Mike, Lieutenant Governor Tolley and I just got off the phone and, and, and we want to give your organization $3 million. And your mission is to ramp up CTE vocational programming into every high school in the state of Kansas. We've identified two that I didn't realize. We're 3.3 million people, approximately, in the state of Kansas. We have over 330 
high school or, or school districts in the state. I, I, that was something I did not know. We were able to identify 298 high schools that can legitimately either ramp up programming or enhance what they currently have. We started with this money last July. The state's budget is July 1 through June 30th. We, I sent out an email to every school superintendent in July of 2022. Within about 45 days, we had 78% of the schools say, we wanna implement your program. The monies that we get from the legislature pays for the textbooks, pays for the online or the, uh, the trainer trainer. Uh, it also pays uh, for uh, the online testing for the students. And the students get a lifelong certificate, an accreditation in all the modules that they complete. They get a certificate and they also get a data card. Embedded on that data card is all their credentials. So if they go to an employer, whether it be here in Kansas, which you're talking to somebody, I'm a big proponent of keeping people in the state of Kansas. The industry workforce, we need 58,000 construction workers over the next four to five years to keep up with demand. Some of it's uh, age of the workforce retiring, but a lot of it is projects like Panasonic, Integra, uh, retail, all those things that go into it. I talked about the baby boom generation, but here's the thing that struck me. One of the things that's great about bringing somebody in from out of state is I don't have any preconceived notions. Do you realize the state of Kansas over the last 20 years has been between 42nd and 47th in the country for out migration of population? A lot of that in our focus groups with high school students tell us that they feel like there's no hope because they, if they're not going to college, what are they gonna do? And that's where CTE vocational programming comes into play. But we have lost a lot of our younger generation because we haven't been telling the story and making things available. You talked about the uh, Promise Act. That's one of the byproducts of some of the storytelling that we've been telling the legislature. That's only the tip of the iceberg. I'm gonna to suggest to you after I finish with the legislature, we're gonna make CTE vocational programming on the same level as pursuing a college degree. Because business and industry demands it. Why the legislature chose us? 58,000 construction workers. Number two, they have to, their economic development people within the Department of Commerce have to be able to uh, assure Fortune 500 companies who are looking over the fence, just like Panasonic. And I will tell you, there's a lot of industry in California, Illinois, and New York, just to start with. Those, those states can't even keep U-Haul trailers in their state because people are tired of taxes, regulation, and a lack of quality of life. And guess what? Kansas is over here saying, look at us. We're not flyover state or flyover country anymore. We're a great place to come, come and, and locate. And so that 40 year decline in the CTE side of things has now provided an opportunity. Anybody remember a mayor in Chicago, his name was Rob Emanuel, who made his famous quote was, don't let a crisis go to waste. Younger generation probably doesn't remember that. They may have studied a little bit in history. I don't know if it got recorded in history. The two things that I consider a crisis with the legislature, out migration of population, they're scared to death. And I tell them, at the rate we're going, if we don't do the, the things, the basic things, to give our young generation the life skills to be employable, which they will be employable, and I'll talk about that here in a minute, that we will continue to lose population. I tell them, and they know I'm gonna say it, in the 30 or 45 minutes I'm in every legislative committee, I end by saying, if we don't continue to invest, I'm not taking talk about taking money away from K through 12. That's not what I'm advocating. The state has enough money in different pots. We need to redirect it smarter into CTE vocational programming. And if we do that, we will prevent us between death 
and out migration, I will predict to you in the next four or five years, we could lose 330,000 people, 10% of our population. And I look at each senator and house member, and I said, that's your constituents. But worse yet, that's tax base. Now, if we lose 330,000 people out of the state of Kansas, we can't do anything about the death side of things. Although that's starting to address it because life expectancy <laughs> continues to go higher and higher. But that tax base, where are you gonna make that up? Legislators are gonna be forced to raise taxes. How's that working out for California, Illinois, and New York right now? And are you gonna put up with higher taxes when we didn't have to do it in the first place if we would reinvest or invest on the front end with programs like what's going out of here? To where, as we've talked to the younger generation in the high schools with focus groups ABC has hosted, I go from Chanute, Kansas, as a high school student, and I've lost hope because I, I just feel like I gotta go to Houston, Dallas, or Denver to make a living. And I go there, and I meet my future spouse. And then we start having kids. Mom and dad are gonna to wanna to visit their kids and their grandkids. And they do it enough to where over the years they start, mom and dad start retiring. Where do you think mom and dad are gonna to move to? Houston, Dallas, or Denver? That story has repeated itself over and over again. I have told the legislature, quality of life in this state should not be taken for granted. What kind of legacy do we want to leave behind? And I've charged this. I, I can say things that most people can't. I've got a large constituency that backs me up. Now, sometimes my board kind of tells me to dot it back a little bit because I can put not just one foot in my mouth, but both feet in my mouth. But I'm not going to apologize on this particular area. We put a lot of money, over half of the state's budget, into education. But what kind of legacy is it that we have kids being born here, raised here, educated here, and then when they get ready to get out of school, they feel like they're gonna move somewhere else. And I've said that directly to every legislator in Topeka and our congressional delegation too. And I'm gonna to continue to say that until there's not a reason to say it. Because we've got great communities like what we have here. And guess what? Mom and dad are gonna retire and guess what? These young, young folks have an opportunity to step in behind their parents and take over a business or start a business or get into a trade and work their way through, just like Blake Flanders, the CEO's son, did. Who would have thought the CEO of a, of a major, major agency, son is making more money than he and, and his wife combined as a plumbing subcontractor owner. I tell the younger generation this too. When COVID was going on, construction was one of the few industries that was deemed essential. We never shut down. Oh, by the way, I'm very proud that my, my safety staff and everything, we didn't have a major COVID incident on any job site during the entire time that COVID was going on because we followed the CDC guidelines and it was a natural for construction folks we, we have a misunderstood industry. The only time you hear about our industry is if somebody gets hurt or, God forbid, somebody's killed on a job site, okay? But you get killed driving home at night, too, on the highway. But the fact is, the only time you hear about it is when it happens, the media takes hold of it. And we started Build Up Kansas as an image campaign to address that, to help target the 17 to 20 year old year olds and their parents about their professional careers in construction. But the fact of the matter is, you don't know this, or if you're, you're in the construction industry or, or some related industry, construction companies have to have insurance. They can't operate without insurance. And if they hire people that are not trained, both in safety and in the craft they're at, they're gonna have increased accidents. And those increased accidents are gonna raise their insurance rates to the point the insurance company cancels their insurance. If they don't have insurance, they're out of business. So I remind people, 
We are, a, we are a dangerous industry, but our companies spend millions of man hours, millions of dollars, making sure their employees work safely and go home at night. And again, if they don't, they're out of business. That's another reason why the legislature turned to us. We cannot fail in addressing finding 58,000 new construction workers. In fact, that was last week at the Panasonic Third Forum over at Kansas University. And they were worried about how, how they're gonna be able to get about 10 to 12,000 construction workers out there. I said, do you realize we have CTE vocational programs all over the state and ABC is coordinating that? Do you realize a lot of kids would come in to DeSoto from the central part of the state and the eastern part of the state to work? And they may even stay in DeSoto. But the fact is, let's keep them in the state of Kansas and, and making a living. And oh, by the way, if they stay in the state of Kansas, instead of meeting their future spouse in Dallas, Houston, or, or Denver, they're gonna meet, to meet their first future spouse in the community they grew up in or somewhere related. They're gonna start a family and then we're gonna grow population. Then we have enough taxes. Wouldn't it be nice to see that we grow population and by growing population, the legislature has more tax base to where then they can give tax breaks to the citizens of Kansas and to the businesses of Kansas. Good things happen when growth happens. A lot of bad things happen when it doesn't. So we've been real, real fortunate. And this didn't happen overnight. In fact, the legislature, when we approached uh, them uh, about five years ago after we launched Build Up Kansas, and to get it, this, this is kind of an overview of NCCR and what it provides uh, and the different crafts. And that's just a snippet. We have over 43 different crafts that NCCR materials uh, cover. Uh, the, uh, I talked about what we pay for in terms of the funding. Uh, we also, on this landing page, well, first of all, when Build Up Kansas was formed by ABC of Kansas five years ago, it was to change the image of industry. We also have a large human resource platform that is attached to Build Up Kansas, and I'll show you an example of that in just a second. We're gonna make that HR platform available to every high school, community college, and Bo Tech, to where you, the students, can download your credentials. And especially as you get ready to graduate, you can send your credentials to the companies who posted their job and send it directly to the HR director who posted that job to have an interview with that HR director. We're gonna connect decision makers with you, the students. Parents, there are 58,000 jobs out there in just construction alone. I can't even account for how manufacturing, aviation, agriculture, but the great thing about having a life skill here at this facility is it's transferable into a lot of different industries. We talked about that earlier. It gives them flexibility like none of them. My daughter graduated from Kansas State University with a marketing degree. She was in a sorority. Most of her friends in the sorority got some social degree, social services. We need social workers, don't get me wrong. But they had this vision in their mind that they were gonna come out of college making a million dollars a year being a president of, the, of, a, of a company. But here's the sad thing. They ran up $100,000, $200,000 with the debt. And my daughter has these conversations with them saying they, they just were uh, completely disappointed that their degree was not gonna give them all these opportunities. And I will tell you, you pursue what you are doing here at this school, it will give you more flexibility, but you won't rack up a big student loan that will take years to pay back. But at the same time, I will tell you, because we also sponsor Kansas State, Pittsburgh State, and, and Fort Hay State construction science programs, a lot of students get into a CTE vocate program, and we have advisory council uh, contractors and myself that serve on those universities. We ask them, how, why did you get into the construction program at Kansas State University or Pittsburgh State or Fort Hay? Well, I started in a CTE vocational program. And I started an entry level position and I worked my way up and I saw opportunity. 
and I, they went back to school because some of those kids are not kids anymore they're actually mid-20s and the ones that are in the 18 to 22 year old side of things freshman sophomore junior they started in CTE and want to continue so there's a percentage of you that probably will find for you to have an opportunity to get into project management or superintendent things of nature that you might want to go back and get some additional education that you would have got otherwise but guess what that CTE vocational training that's life skill that you're getting here opens some doors that normally wouldn't do do so and again I, I we support four-year institutions like I said we're a major sponsor at Kansas State Pittsburgh State Fort Hayes State so I don't want anybody to think that we're over here bashing our university they do some tremendous things in fact Pittsburgh State and K-State are in the top 10 in the country for construction science and engineering they do a tremendous job at, at what they're doing there um, in terms of uh, what else Build Up Kansas does, this is the this is the HR platform, and my IT guy told me I was supposed to get alternate what tab <laughs> again. I'm, I'm overlapping on somebody. Here, give me just a second. I wanted to show you the and for the parents and the kids, if you go to buildupks.com, uh, that landing page has been seen by a million and a half people over the last four years. This is the landing page. And we started as an image campaign, but we had an HR platform, and then we tied, tied NCCR into the, the mix. We have had over a million and a half landing page hits. Do you realize the average time that you and I look at a, a website, and this is according to our two social media partners. This was interesting. <clears throat> we started with Bredeman Group, which is, represents the aviation industry, and we like their business model. Last year, we stumbled across another social media marketing firm called Brush Marketing. You know where Brush Marketing is located? I, my contractors didn't know where this was. Downs, Kansas. Anybody know where Downs, Kansas is? Show hands. <laughs> I got three people in the room, nowhere at four, nowhere at Downs, Kansas is. Brush Marketing in Downs, Kansas has the national marketing account for Caterpillar. Wow. If you walk away going, God, that bald headed guy talks too much. And I learned one thing for the day, my grandfather told me years ago. Learn one thing new for the day, and you'll be you'll be in good shape. There's your one new thing for the day. <laughs> Downs, Kansas, flyover country has Brush Marketing, the national account for Caterpillar, which is the top manufacturer in the world. We now have them as a partner. But the average time you and I look at a website is 45 seconds. Our analytics, monthly analytics that we get with Build Up Kansas is over four and a half minutes. The kids are looking at it. We use, and I'm gonna challenge you, the young folks in the room, I know this is your encyclopedia. Probably you don't even know what an encyclopedia is. <laughs> but your, your resource to find everything, and with all the talk about AI, it's gonna get even more interesting. But the fact is, in our focus groups with the younger generation around the state, a lot of you still don't know what industries are in Kansas. And that's where Build Up Kansas is coming to play. But we're getting four and a half minute of viewership on the videos, latest, we, we, we interview some high school students that recently graduated. We have a, a student from Bishop Carroll out of Wichita that graduated here a couple of years ago that's on this, this landing page. They graduated from their CTE vocational program. Our, one of our drywall acoustical subs hired him. He started out at $38,000. He's now making almost $70,000 a year, and their rep is on my board of directors, Matt Lashley, with Drawwall System. Tells me that because he's bilingual, he's gonna be making over $100,000 in the next couple of years, and the kid won't even be 23 or 24 years old. Now, I'm not gonna tell you that that's the norm, but there is the, the pathway to get there if you apply yourself. 
I'm going to give you something else to walk away with, and this is parents. Uh, what are the three things that business is looking for in hiring somebody in today's market? Can they show up on time? Can they pass a drug test? And do they have a driver's license? Ladies and gentlemen, that's a sad commentary that we have digressed that much. Now, I know that is not anywhere close to what's coming out of this program. Those questions are going to be asked or, way, or answered way before we hit the marketplace. <clears throat> but nationwide, show up on time, pass a drug test, and have a driver's license. I was out at Chaparral High School last month, and I said that, and every student in the CTE vocational program, they have a large carpentry program out there. They said, no problem. I said, I'm glad to hear that, because it is a problem in, in other industries and, and other parts of the country. But parents, those are the three things that business industry is looking for at this point in time. I did want to show you on Build Up Kansas, the, uh, the HR platform, and I hope you will take advantage of, of that uh, at, at your leisure. Oh, by the way, one of the things the universities told us is they had limited opportunities to go out and see the high schools to recruit into their programs, kind of like an athletic scholarship. They said, we have a way to do this. We use social media to target the 17 to 20 year olds and their parents. In fact, several high school CTE instructors are now using Build Up Kansas in their parent teacher night to show the parents, this is why your son or daughter's in my class, okay? But we, we said, how about we give a two minute video to Kansas State, Pittsburgh State, Fort Hayes State to showcase what they're doing in their respective departments. So there's a message, if you click on the four year college, you get see those three institutions and you can hear a message from the department head and about three or four students of why they chose to get in that program. Last year, I was invited to talk to presidents of, of the community colleges at Hutch, and Cali College president said, Mike, why couldn't we get, would you give the community colleges a two minute video? I said, absolutely. Because a lot of the younger generation don't know what's going on in the community colleges. If we're already spending, we spend over a half million dollars a year in, in social media. We're already out there. So why not attach our community colleges and our four-year institutions? And we're getting ready to add the high school uh, to showcase what they're doing. And you know, I'm gonna show you how we're doing that for the high schools real quick and just in another slide in just a second. And there's some other bells and whistles here that you can look at, but this is where I wanted to specifically get to. Can I hit enter to get to hit one of these things? Yeah, uh, which one do you need? Uh, just, just hit search jobs. Search jobs, all right. This links to our HR platform. Scroll down on that real quick. It's probably taking a second. I'm, I'm gonna uh, quickly hit Carpenter. Zerko out of Wichita is looking for a carpenter. They get a description of what's going on. Let's scroll down just a little bit. It, it gives information there, but let's go back up and let's apply apply for that job. Scroll down. <laughs> Young folks, you can take your Word resume document, drop and drag it, apply for that job in, in Wichita at Zernco Construction. And that resume goes directly to the HR director, and I will promise you, you'll get a phone call within the hour from that HR director. Mm -hmm. That is a turnkey landing page. That's what got the Department of Commerce's attention. In fact, last week in my meeting with Panasonic, I've offered to have a portal specifically Panasonic post all their job openings. Now, I've got some of my contractors who are going, Mike, why do we want to include manufacturing? And I've actually got Evergy. Evergy has lost a bunch of linemen to the East and West Coast. East and West Coast is looking for people. And I remind people, I, we, we learned this through Kansas State University and Pittsburgh State. We had some graduates a few years ago that took jobs, especially at Kansas State, took jobs in San Francisco. 
I said, why are we going to San Francisco? Where well, they're gonna pay us sixty thousand dollars more a year. I said, Well, that's great. I said, You know what the cost of living is out there? Well, no. They weren't they're not teaching cost of living at our university. He says, Well, how do I find that out? I said, Go go to the US Chamber of Commerce website and you can put in one city and another city and make a comparison. I said, while we're sitting here, let me let me do that. I'm gonna put it up on my phone real quick. It's gonna cost them $120,000 more than Kansas. Okay, he's making $60,000, but it's gonna cost him $120,000 more. New, even new math tells you that's a loss, right? <laughs> okay, so now we're working as an industry to get the universities to incorporate a small percentage of their credits for cost of living, economics. But Sarah, we're seeing a slowdown because our advisory council met with the seniors two weeks ago and every one of them have an offer. And now about 90% of them are staying in the state of Kansas. And I asked one of them, why? Me and my colleagues have been watching what's happening around the country in terms of COVID and some of the decision making other states are making. And there's a lot of uncertainty. And Kansas brings a lot more certainty to the table. We may, we may not realize that uh, we may make more money going somewhere else, but when we start looking at the cost of living, that doesn't make any sense. Not to mention I'm gonna be away from my family. So those are some of the things a construction trade association, Chamber of Commerce is doing to keep things in front of everybody. How do I get back to, to uh, do I hit alt, alternate tab again to get back to, okay. Uh, <laughs> I want to get, yeah, here we go. I talked about the state funding. Uh, credentials. Ladies and gentlemen, credentials are the way of the future. Think of it as a college degree. Although that college degree is not very valuable nowadays. Your credentials is the key to open the door for an employer. It, it, it will give you, and, and the schools are using NCCR helps heighten that because the industry recognizes the NCCR was put together by 13 of the largest general contractors in the country to address standardization to meet the Fortune 500 companies, uh, Fortune 500 companies uh, demand for standardization. Standardization means that your credentials can be recognized in Chinook, Wichita, Manhattan, Garden City, wherever you're going. You have that data card and you have that certificate. If you lose your certificate, NCCR will replace that. All you have to do is call in and say, hey, I, I need my replacement. And they've got you in a database for, for, the, for the rest of your life. So those credentials are critical in what you're, what you're pursuing. I'll scroll through here real quick. Um, I talked about our success with the schools. We're making tremendous uh, progress. Oh, by the way, one of the other things we committed to the legislature, uh, Dodge City High School has some uh, carpentry programs, HVAC, and they're starting a sheet metal program. I said, Mike, do you realize how expensive a sheet metal break is? I said, yeah, it's about $80,000, $100,000. We can't afford that. So I went to one of my sheet metal subcontractors. I said, who's your manufacturer? They gave me the manufacturer and I said, I need your help. They're starting a program out there. Remember my story about Monarch? Why they're donating block and cement? If they don't have masons to lay their, their product, they're out of business. The manufacturer of the sheet metal uh, equipment said, I'll be more than happy to donate a sheet metal break out there. And oh, by the way, I'll talk to one of my major suppliers about donating some of the sheet metal. Because if they don't have sheet metal workers, they're out of business. In fact, one of the biggest challenges aviation has in Wichita right now, they need 10,000 sheet metal workers. And right now, Cali College, Hutch, Butler Community College, and Wichita Area Technical College are scrambling to try to figure out how to address that. I would suggest to you, collectively, they're doing about 400 students, 440. How long is it gonna take to get 10,000? 
That's where I'm advocating ramping up CTE vocational programming because that will be a feeder system into their program to address the needs at aviation. Oh, by the way, my counterpart in Oklahoma City has told me the last three years, Mike, what's the heck, what the heck's going on with Spirit and Textron? I said, what do you mean? So they've been down here for the last three years talking to some of our economic development people. Well, why are they probably talking to them? Probably because Oklahoma is saying, hey, we can deliver on 10,000 sheet metal. They can't, but they're talking to them about it. Yeah. And I've told some of our policymakers in, in Topeka, just because you drive down the turnpike going from here to, to the Oklahoma-Kansas line and you look over to the left and you see all millions of square feet of spirit warehousing, manufacturing, that's just going to be there the rest of rest of the time. I got news for you. Let me give you an example. My hometown of Shreveport, Louisiana, built the Chevy Colorado. General Motors had a major plant there on I-10 or I-20, right outside of town. They built that plant about 25 or 30 years ago. Right before I left to take the position in New Mexico, I told people, you better get your act together in terms of training and, and efficiency and productivity and nobody listened. I said, they possibly could leave. Well, guess what? There was a meeting up in Detroit, Michigan, and they analyzed all their plants around the country. And they made a decision to exile the plant in Shreveport, Louisiana. They didn't make that decision, or they made that decision that day. They didn't make the announcement until about three or four years later. They sent some flunky down and, and had a press conference that we're, we're closing this plant. You could have heard a pin drop. I had media people calling me because I predicted that that possibly could happen. They called me out in New Mexico. I said, how'd you know that? I said, everything comes down to workforce. The governor of Louisiana, the legislature came running. What can we do to keep General Motors in our community? We made the decision three years ago. I said the same thing to our legislature on Spirit and Textron. We've got to step up and do our part and use these facilities and use our younger generation to give them the opportunities like there's no tomorrow. Or we could see Spirit making an announcement, making a decision today and making an announcement three or four years down the line and guess what? Our governor and everybody else come running. Oh, what can we do? What we can we do? I told you I put one foot, sometimes two feet in my mouth. I've had some chamber folks and some legislators said, Mike, you need to quit talking about that. I said, why? I said, I'm not trying to scare people. I'm trying to people, get people to wake up. That CT vocational programming is critical to not only new economic development, but sustained economic development. And I don't want to say, could you imagine if that happened? Because I can tell you what happened in my hometown. It would be the biggest embarrassment for the state of Kansas and the entire country would know about it. And do you think a new company would be interested in coming to Kansas after they read a story about a major company? Their comment's going to be, if you can't take care of Spirit and Textron, how are you going to take care of me? So there's a lot riding on that. I want to... I'm probably getting close because again, I like to talk. I like to get before groups like you because we have a lot to talk about. Here's some of the successes we've had since July 1 with Build Up Kansas and our partnership with the state. We've had 98 high schools, it's now over 100 uh, that have signed MOUs and started implementing CCR. That equates to 119 certified instructors across the state, over 3,000 students, taking NCCR uh, courses and almost 30,000 credential issued. I was very fortunate to hire a retired, he just retired last June, a uh, school superintendent out of Raleigh County. His name is Brad Starnes. Uh, he is very well known within the superintendent, but he talks their language. I'm getting ready to hire a, a one of the top CTE high school instructors who is getting ready to retire next month because he can talk high school language. But then I hired three uh, industry HR folks that can talk to my, my rank and file about what, what opportunities we got. Here's one of the things that the legislature likes. Every time we sign an MOU and bring on a new high school, and then my, I have to give my staff a lot of credit on this there, they came up with this idea. We push out via social media a press release 
recognizing the high school, the high school superintendent, the high school principal, the high school CTE vocational programming, but even more importantly, we recognize the state senator and the house member in that area with their Facebook. I've had more state senators and house members call me and said, my God, I'm getting calls from constituents telling me thank you for putting money in the CTE program to give my son or daughter a career opportunity and a life still in high school. We want to reinforce that. That's why we will get more money to help expand this facility and get more money to help the high schools get where they need to be because at the end of the day, this country is going to succeed or fail based on what we do in CTE vocational programming, bar none. I will debate that with anybody and I will bet you a lunch that over the next 10 years, if we do this right, uh, Kansas is going to be one of the top schools. I, these are just a couple other schools uh, that recently came on board. I got to get a lot of accolades. We had <clears throat> AGC hosted with NCCR a uh, CTE instructor workshop in Wichita last week. We had almost 125 instructors there. It was kind of customer service, best practices, and a Q&A with NCCR who came from Florida in to participate. Oh, by the way, the textbooks are published by Pearson. Everybody knows who Pearson is. Uh, and NCCR worked with us to identify the top performing schools, both high school and post-secondary. Your instructor, Alex Myers, was selected out here as the instructor of the year. Let, let's get I want to get him out of the time. I understand y'all recognize he, he gets embarrassed real easy. And you can see in that that photo there, in fact, that hard hat we had special made up. There's there were only five hard hats in that particular realm. There's nothing no, none other in the state like it. He was reluctant to come up and get his hard hat and get, get an award on that thing. But he doesn't realize he is being splattered all over the social media uh, world, <laughs> promoting. And it's not just him, it's your school that's being promoted worldwide on what's going on out here. This is, this is not a best kept secret, ladies and gentlemen. This is a premier program out here and will continue to lead the way. And we can't tell you how much we appreciate it because again, remember, we cannot, we cannot fail. We cannot fail in, in what we're uh, doing here. So uh, I was excited to have the opportunity to come out here. If you don't know by now, I'm very passionate about our industry, but I'm more passionate about these young folks because of the opportunities they have. And I'm even more passionate for your, for your parents because my goal is to see, and if you happen to have to leave the state, I understand. But my goal is to make sure the best possible way to keep our kids in the state of Kansas and helping address the future economic development opportunities that we have in front of us. But again, the instructors, the faculty here, and you are economic developers. Because without, I go back again, I, I repeat myself a lot because I want to reemphasize. CTE vocational programming is critical. It is the, the key component to economic development now and well in the future. And finally, our legislature understands it. We have the Department of Education. Randy Watson is a good friend of mine. Randy and I probably butt heads a little bit. I used to have a lot more hair on my head until I started butting heads with Randy. <laughs> but there are still some people, not so much Randy, but he has some folks in his department that are still hung up on sending everybody to college. But just as what we're getting ready to see today and what we're seeing around the state, we've got to have balance, ladies and gentlemen. You've got to have balance. You've got to have four institutions, community college, VOTEC, high school. If you have all that working together, the goal is get our younger folks into a high school program with a life skill. If they choose to go to college, they still have credentials to supplement their K through 12 education. But if they don't, they have credentials to move into the community college VOTEC side. And some of them, a percentage will say, I want to go, I, now I have enough money, I want to go to college and get some additional education. 
But if we don't start on the front end, all this other stuff isn't going to matter. And again, I am not in the business to fail because if we don't meet that 58,000 construction workers, I will stand before you in the next three or five years, or somebody else will, and say that an AGC of Kansas only represents about 150 of them. Because those other 150 are going to be out of business because they don't have skilled workers working for them. It, it, it's just common sense. But common sense has a tendency to go out the door when we talk about Topeka, Kansas, and we talk about Washington, D.C. I don't know where the disconnect is with our policymakers. Fortunately, we have a very strong congressional delegation, and I will give major accolades. We have a, a really good legislature. It just took them a little longer to figure out what, what is the key to successes. So with that, I want to tell you, I want to tell the faculty, thank you, thank you, thank you for your leadership. I want to tell the parents, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here to support your, your uh, kids. And for our younger generation, I'm so excited of what the future is going to hold for you because, again, you are in the best position ever of any generation in 75 or 80 years. You're going to be able to take hold, just apply yourself. You're beyond showing up on time, passing a drug test, and a driver's license. You're way above that. But once you get into the career that you want to do, keep applying yourself. And I will suggest to you, you will go to the top of your list. I will leave you with this too. This can become a dangerous item for you. Communication is not this. Having interpersonal skills, where Brian and I are, are talking to each other, are critical. You get on a manufacturing or construction job site or whatever it may be. If you can communicate, I will promise you the management of that company is going to move you way ahead of the curve. So if you're a little reluctant to engage, step out of your shell. I'm going to leave you with this. When I was in high school, I, was, I attended the largest high school in Houston, Texas. I, I still call varsity basketball. I was wrote back in by Keisha when I moved here. I call about 75 varsity men's and, and, and women's basketball games around the state. And I do that because a lot of the schools are using our NCCR, so I go in and talk to principals. But uh, the, the fact being is uh, what I have seen through communication, I had, my graduating class was 1,800. Okay, 1,800, Bel Air High School. I st and now I only know three of 1,800. And a lot of these basketball officials are from small towns. And we'll talk about this. And they said, my graduate class was 20 or 25. I said, I bet you know every student or every classmate, their kids, their grandkids. He said, yeah, I do. I said, man, I missed out on that. But one of the things that I, well, I was very introverted in high school. Imagine that. I talked too much. Not in high school. I got, happened to get into a fraternity, and it brought me out of my shell. I don't know what it's going to take to, if you are a little introverted to bring out of your shell, but a light switch went on with me to where now you can't get me to shut up, okay? But if you can communicate well with your classmates, with your instructors, when you get out in the working world, the sky's the limit because the industry is looking for people who can communicate and not get into using their thumbs with this, okay? In fact, my son had carpal tunnel, had, had surgery uh, about a year ago, and I talked to the, to the surgeon about it. He said, I'm seeing more younger generation having carpal tunnel because of this. They're using that. So come out of your shell a little bit. Apply what you're going to learn in the, in, into this facility and engage yourself because it will move you so far ahead in the professional working uh, uh, world. It's not even funny. By the way, I keep using the word professional. Construction, our industry, we don't consider it jobs. It's a professional career because it truly is. 
And it's also one of the last two industries in the country, technology and construction, that still have entrepreneurial opportunity. So, and we, we were deemed essential and never shut down back in the day with COVID. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, this is a great day. I'm standing in between some great things that are getting ready to happen here. Uh, are there any questions or concerns or shut up or whatever? <laughs> uh, thank you again for having me out today and I'm looking forward to it. Mike, we really appreciate you coming today. And I hope you stay around for the rest of everything today. We're going to do a couple little transition setup pieces here, real quick. And while we do that, um, all of those who are signees today, can you just stand for just a moment? Please and thank you. signing let's go ahead and uh, we'll have Brenda come our Dean of Outreach and Workforce Development go ahead and uh, get everybody lined up and, and ready to go okay thank you signees um, we're very proud of you and glad to have you here today at this time I'm going to read your name and I'm going to read the program that you're signing for and once I read your name if you could go over and find a seat excuse me at the long table uh, with the fancy chairs, uh, I would appreciate it. Um, and then uh, we'll get everybody over there and then we'll have a video, is that correct? And make sure you grab your folder and your pen that was given to you in the first lesson. Okay, so you've got your folder and your pen. And I'm gonna call your names and as I call your names, if you would please go to the signing table. And the first signing that I'm going to announce is Brandon Sykes, who is signing for Weldy. We also have Bradley Morris, who is signing with Weldy. Bradley. Daxon Axelson, signing with Weldy. Connor Wickham, signing with Weldy. John signing with welding. Jackson Vaughn signing with both construction and industrial maintenance technology. Garen Donaldson signing with IMT and construction. Joseph, excuse me, Joseph Tapia, signing with Industrial Maintenance Technology and Electrical. <laughs> Chandler Wagner, signing with Electrical. <laughs> Jace Tapia, signing with both Electrical and Industrial Maintenance Technology. Chase Sanborn, signing with Plumbing. Does everybody have a pen and everybody have a folder? 
Just making sure. We're not quite there yet. Still working on our video, but actually we'll go ahead, Stephen, if you want to go ahead and we'll kind of uh, flip out something real quick here. And Stephen, go ahead and play that 3M video for us, please. Okay, it is now time for me to make a very special announcement. I have with me Mark Donaldson, who is our instructor of industrial maintenance technology, and he is also the instructor of our aerostructure program. NCCC, the college here today, is honored to announce the winner of the 2023 Skilled Trades 3M Transformational Scholarship. This is one of 50 scholarships awarded across the nation. This is a $1,000 scholarship. I'm going to announce the name of the scholarship winner and ask that winner to come forward. The winner of this 3M transformational $1,000 scholarship is Chandler Wagoner. Chandler, please come forward. Congratulations, Chandler. Please help us in giving him a round of applause. Did we get the photo? Did you get the photo? Okay, all right, that's very important. Thank you, thank you. Ready for okay, signees, you've got your pens in hand. You've got your document in front of you. It is now the moment that we're going to ask you to officially sign your intent to attend a career in technology program in the fall of 2023 at the Mitchell Career and Technology Center. Please sign your document. Excellent, thank you all very much. We appreciate you very much, and we're looking forward to having you, or some of you, continue in our programs in this fall. Um, all right. Be photo op. Okay, Shadow Panther is going to um, make himself available for a photo. Before I dismiss you all. <laughs> All right, 
thank you. Um, and finally, I would just like to thank all of you for coming out today for our inaugural event. I would like to thank Mike and his organization, uh, Build Up Kansas especially, we appreciate because they do help pay for our uh, textbooks and our NCCER credentials and our instructor training. So Mike, for your advocacy and your passion for CTE, thank you. Appreciate you very much. He gets a hat. And today, um, I also, before you leave, I would like to invite you to walk around the facility and make sure you check out the labs, open the doors, look inside. Uh, we're glad uh, to have you here and want you to see the facility. Um, I also would be remiss if I did not give a special thanks to Christina Stang, who's put this together today. So if you please join the team, we have a round of applause. I think the next thing before I dismiss you to go to see the vendor fair. Vendors are located throughout the building. Make sure you stop in and talk to them. We're going to be giving away some door prizes. So if you have your tickets, you might grab your tickets and see if you're a winner. And I'm gonna turn the microphone over to Christina and Chelsea to do some door prizes. I'm gonna have Chelsea pick the winners. And we have a prizes for students and parents and vendors and everybody. Did everybody get a ticket? Let me ask you that. Anybody that needs a ticket? We didn't. Yes. Taylor will be on her way with some tickets, so we will uh, make sure everybody has the opportunity. Does everybody have a ticket now? Everyone, everyone? While, while everyone's getting a ticket, I just want to remind everyone um, there is a photo opportunity with the Panther. And behind the restroom, there is a selfie station with props and all sorts of fun things. We also want to get um, pictures with signees and their parents or any other family or friends that are here today. So before you guys dismiss, we wanna make sure that um, we get plenty, plenty of uh, photo opportunities for, for that. And then vendors, um, we again wanna just thank you so much for being here today. Um, we do have a private lunch reception for you after the career fair is over and we will direct you to where that location is um, when we dismiss. So just make sure you don't leave before we feed you. Okay, the first number is, and I'm gonna read probably the last, what, five, four? All right, last, that last digits, 5664. Come on down. Anyone? Anyone? No? All right, I guess that was, all right. We'll do the next one. 5655. Five, five. Nobody? Nobody? Really? Okay. Hmm. Let's see here. They left before winning, I guess. 5676. 5676. Woohoo! Come on down. Congratulations. You're welcome. All right, our next winner is 5714. 5714. Woohoo! Jerry. Yeah. Go on. How about five, six, five, 
really fun. Okay, next letter. Five, six, eight, nine. Five, six, eight, nine. Okay. Going, going, on. Okay. Five, seven, one, three. All right, here we go. Yeah. 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 Yeah.